Probably the two biggest questions that come up on this channel all the time are, should I be using Adobe Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro 10? And should I use Mac or PC for video editing? Now I've already answered the first one and I'll put a link up in the cards now. So it's time to tackle the second one. Should you use a Mac or a PC for video editing? Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we release a ton of content to help you get better results with your videos faster. If you're new here, then make sure you click that big subscribe button and all the links to everything that we're covering in this video, you can find linked in the description below. So let's jump into it. Now I've been a long time user of both Mac and PC and I still use both of them on a regular basis. In this video, I'm gonna share my thoughts on the Mac versus PC debate, specifically for video editing, to help you make the best decision for which one is right for you. It seems like no matter what you say in videos like this, fanboys on both sides of the fence throw out accusations and get super defensive. So I've actually avoided this video for quite a long time. Now I've broken this video down into two parts. We're gonna start off with Mac and I'm gonna share three things that I like about Mac or three things that you need to know about Mac. And then I'm gonna do exactly the same for PC. So starting off with Mac, the first thing that I like is the optimization. A perfect example of optimization on Mac is Final Cut Pro 10. The level of performance that you get, the ability to edit 4K video files seamlessly, even on older Mac laptops and Mac computers is phenomenal. And really it's due to the optimization of the software, being able to talk directly to the Intel QuickSync technology or to be able to make use of the QuickSync technology, which you can use on Windows as well. Software like Cyberlink PowerDirector does tap into the Intel QuickSync technology as well, which makes that a fast and powerful video editing solution as well. But it's nothing like what you get when you've got the same manufacturer manufacturing hardware and the software and the operating system. The three of them combined allow you to get the most amount of performance and power out of your software and your computer as a whole. So the level of communication and optimization that you get with Final Cut Pro 10, talking to the operating system, talking to the hardware components that are fixed amongst all Apple computers is a really, really powerful thing. Now this is something that can't easily be replicated in a Windows environment due to the large range or the non-standardization of hardware. Number two is portability and battery life. Now one of the main reasons that I first bought a Mac laptop years ago was for portability and battery life. There was nothing that competed on the Windows or the PC side to compete with the level of battery life that you would get and the performance and how portable the systems were. Now obviously laptops and battery life have come a long way since then. But what you will find is that say a, a laptop that's rated for an eight hour battery life will drop to like two hours the moment that you put it under some load. So a GPU or a CPU intensive task like video editing. And that's the same across the board. But what you will find is that the Macs will give you more performance and a longer battery life than the equivalent Windows laptop. So that's definitely one there for the Macs. And as someone who still travels a lot and edits a lot on planes and places where there isn't access to power, it definitely makes sense to choose the system that's gonna run the longest and it's gonna allow you to get the most amount of work done. So for me, that's the Mac. And number three is usability and accessories. Now, I have an IT degree. I've been building systems most of my life, Windows systems, Linux systems, servers, and even Hackintoshes. But what you'll find is that on Mac, when you buy an off-the-shelf system, there's nothing else that you need to do to get it up and running. You don't have to stuff around with drivers and, and updates and all sorts of things that really just take a huge amount of time. In a video that we did recently comparing the 2016 MacBook Pro, the 2016 Dell XPS 15 inch and the 2015 MacBook Pro, in order to get Adobe Premiere running right and to install the CUDA drivers or CUDA drivers was a huge thing and it shouldn't have been. On Mac, we just installed Adobe Premiere and the thing worked. On Windows, we had to go through three different versions of Nvidia drivers just so Adobe Premiere would pick up the drivers to get the most out of the system. And it's the simple things like that, that as Windows users, you just get used to doing. You get used to running all these updates and used to updating drivers for things and plugging something in and having to install drivers. Now I know that you still have to do some of those things on Mac, but it's really noticeable when you've been in the Mac world for quite a while and you go back to Windows and you just take for granted how streamlined and how everything just works. And I really hate to say that on some levels, but it does, it all just works. 
and it just means you can focus on creating your videos, creating your content, or just getting general work done instead of having to play around with all the tech stuff. If you've got any issues with your Mac computer, then the warranties are really good. You can normally get a quick fix by dropping it into a Apple store or a certified Apple repairer. And you know that if they have to replace any hardware, it's all certified hardware. So once again, no dealing with drivers or incompatible hardware. Now it's time to look at the three things that I like or the three things that you need to know about PC. And the first is specs and performance. So while Mac had the tight integration and the optimization between the software, the operating system and the hardware, PCs have brute force power, meaning that you can install and buy and use the latest processors, the latest graphics card, all the latest technology and gear. You can build and buy systems that have these in it, giving you the most powerful computers that you can get. And the payoff then into your video editing means you'll have faster exporting, faster rendering, and overall smoother performance while you're editing. So if you want the latest and greatest gear or you want the most powerful computer that you can get, then you'll be after a PC. Now onto number two, which is price. Now, if you're comparing Apple's to PCs and you're looking at an even comparison on price and specifications and what you get for the price, you will definitely get more bang for buck on the PC side than you will from the Mac. The Mac will be considerably higher. In saying that, one thing that a lot of people don't look at and don't take into consideration when they're looking to buy a computer, PC or Mac, is the resale value on both the systems. If you're looking to sell your computer after a few years, then it's definitely worth investigating the resale value on your computers because in most cases, the PCs will not hold much value. There's too many new components and hardware upgrades and new systems that are coming out all the time in the PC world versus what's coming out and what's released in the Mac space. So as an example, I recently sold a Mac laptop, which originally cost me $3,600. I sold it four years later for $1,000. So that's a huge, huge thing. I don't think there's too many PC computers that you could get and you could buy for around $3,600 and sell four years later for $1,000. So it's definitely something to consider when you're looking and when you're comparing pricing and what you get for the pricing when you're buying your systems. If you're not interested in resale and you're just looking for the best bang for your buck, the most performance that you'll get for your dollar spend, it will be a PC. And number three is upgradability. I really like that you can still upgrade your components on your PCs. On most of your Macs, you're locked down. You can't replace things like video cards. You can't replace RAM or even add extra RAM, change out SSDs, or really add additional hard drives or anything like you used to be able to. Most Windows computers or PCs can still be upgraded these days. In some cases, you might find that laptops have their RAM that's fixed or soldered onto the main board and can't be upgraded. But in a lot of cases, you can still upgrade SSDs, upgrade RAM, and in some cases, you can upgrade other components as well. Then on the desktop side, you can build your own full custom system. And if you had a CPU die or you have a video card die, it's just a matter of swapping out that individual component component and you're back up and running. So if you're looking at lifespan of your system and longevity and, and an upgrade path, then you really want to consider the PC side versus the Mac because the Macs these days are pretty well locked down. So those are the three things I like about Mac and the three things I like about PC. So just as a really quick wrap up, Macs are great if you like Final Cut, if you want to use Final Cut. I use mine for Final Cut and for Adobe Premiere, which renders a little bit slower, but still works fine. It's great for travel. I love the portability. I love the battery life. And I love that there's no headaches with things like drivers. And then in most cases, the software that I'm using is really optimized to get the most out of the hardware that I'm using. PCs or Windows computers, on the other hand, are typically lower cost, they're upgradable, and they've got a lot more power, especially for the dollar versus dollar spend. And that power can be used to help speed up your video editing, speed up your rendering and exporting, especially for non-system optimized software like Adobe Premiere. But you can also use on Windows CyberLink PowerDirector, which does integrate well with Intel QuickSync technology, meaning that you're really getting a good connection between your software and your hardware to get the most out of it. Now, hardware is just one piece of the puzzle when it comes to editing. The other is software. Check out the video linked on screen now for my thoughts on Adobe Premiere Pro versus Final Cut Pro 10. I'll see you soon.